<laughs> 30 minutes again. Boom. Part two. We're back. <laughs> Where were we? That one excuses. Intermission. Intermission, yeah. Not a very long one at all. Um, yeah, it was a couple little excuses then because something you and I have had some long conversations about on our on our runs. Mm -hmm. And so tell me, like, I want people to hear your story from the point where in, you felt you were in kind of that like negative spiral with like your boyfriend at the a yeah. couple of years ago, and you kind of turned around, and you started taking fault on everything you do. All right, so yeah. go, so go into that a little bit. Yeah. I so and I think this is something that a lot of people have experienced or are experiencing, and it's sort of a place that I find. Um, it's just extremely common. Um, basically, for me, I was unhappy in my relationship, but not just with my boyfriend at the time. Um, I was unhappy with like personal relationships, like friends and and family and stuff like that. And there's just like a lot of stress and tension. Um, I went through like a year of anxiety where I swear I cried almost every single weekend, and I had no idea why, but that was my reality at the time. And um, I just felt very stressed and burnt out. And there's a lot of stuff that at the time I I feel like I couldn't figure out, but. I didn't really know where to look also um, and it's I found it so easy to be like why me why me you know kind of play that victim that victim role um, and I'm not really sure actually no I am sure what the turning point was um, maybe it's a little bit cloudy because it was a while ago but um, I, I started just looking for answers and it's funny, I, I started with YouTube, um, just started watching a lot of videos. I think I watched every single like Tony Robbins video on YouTube because I don't know, I like stumbled across one of his things. I was like, wow, I really like that. Yeah. Like loved his like perspective and outlook and and you know, that tough love sort of thing. So um, it started with stuff like that and basically I was just looking for any way to shift my perspective and my mentality towards what was going on because I realized that there was nothing I could do about those other people or those other situations. Like I had tried stuff and it didn't work. Like I tried writing letters, I had tried um, communicating, I had tried uh, voicing and expressing my feelings and everything like that and nothing worked. And it's because you can't control those people. You can't, you have zero control over that. So, but what you do have control over is yourself and your own thoughts. And so that's what I started learning was how to shift my perspective around these things. And I think the biggest thing is to like understand that those situations may not be your fault, but it's your responsibility to deal with them or your responsibility as to how you're going to deal with them. So I was, yeah, definitely in a really low spot and it was tough because I was full-time school, I was working at the same time, I was still working out all the time, had a relationship, I, you know, had friendships and family that I had to try and balance too and I just felt like a mess. Um, but that's where I started to reevaluate like my mindset with it and my perspective and um, start taking accountability for my role in this situation um, because again that's that's the only thing I could do right I tried to mitigate problems with those people but when you're not getting anywhere right you can either sit there and be extremely frustrated and let that anxiety fester and let all those other things fester or you can shift your mindset shift your mentality and get out of that and realize that what what is going on with them really has nothing to do with you and that you can only really control you know what's going on inside of you right yeah so like when so how did you start taking that like that action of being like I'm completely I don't want to say at fault for everything, mm -hmm. but were you just like taking responsibility? Yeah, for were it. you like dismissive of people in terms of like, all right, man, like the, this is like your shit, this is your shit, and I'm gonna like walk away from that. Yeah. Were you, were you quick to dismiss that? Did you change your environment up? Was it just more like how how did you kind of and how did how did that change? Yeah. Benefit you now. Yeah, that's tough because I feel like it was probably a lot of different things. Um, so again, it started by learning. I think the best way is to educate yourself and start listening to like how other people perceive things and then trying to apply that 
with your own situation as well. So a lot of that can be done through journaling, which is something that I did. So I kind of had this like never ending list of whys. Mm -hmm. So I'd ask myself a question and answer that question and be like, okay, what bothers you, right? You write down sort of like what bothers you and then you just start picking it apart. You're like, well, why does that bother you? And then, so you write what you think, right? And you'd be like, well, why do you think that, right? And it's sort of, you have to start unraveling the truths and really questioning your beliefs about what's going on. Be like, is that true? Is that true? Because like a lot of stuff that's going on is really things that we have kind of put into our heads. Um, it's stuff that we have kind of created for ourselves. We start telling ourselves a narrative. Um, as soon as, like, you know, and, and I think, like, there's a lot that kind of leads up to that, like, certain situations or, you know, ways that people might treat us, um, you know, all of a sudden you start internalizing that, um, and that's where those stories start to come, yeah. is when you internalize those issues, um, but I, you know, you really have to sit back and be like, okay, no, that's them, and this is me, right? Um, realizing that a lot of the stuff that's happening is because of their own struggles and their own mindset and where they are, and that has less to do with you, right? How much wasted energy do we put on that too, right? Oh, we're my trying, gosh. We're trying to like, like unravel this story of like, but why aren't they responding? Or why is this email taking for, forever? Right? And like, what did I do? Like, they're not, they, like, they didn't respond. Like, I thought they would respond. And like, we're unraveling this fucked up story. It's like, yeah. bro, just like, do you, man. Like, be confident. Yeah. Like, hey, man, I put out a message. I said something like this is what it is. I know where I was coming from. If someone takes it a certain way, you know, if it keeps coming back to you, we're like, everyone thinks Melissa's a dick. So, like, right, maybe you're a dick, Melissa. Yeah. <laughs> but if it's like one or two people are like, oh, like get offended by something, it's like, man, like, this might just be your insecurity, your own problem. Like, it's just like there comes a point yeah. where like you got to look in the mirror and be like, if people are going away from from you and like, they're being like kind of like distant or just weird, it's like, okay, man, maybe that person's just not the right person for your life, right? And like, yeah. and it's, they're not bettering you, and let's. It's a tough pill, right? It's a tough pill to be like, hey, man, like, I'm on a different path than my environment. Yep. And a lot of people that, you know, we surround ourselves with are very either yes men or they'll rationalize and they'll come up with excuses and stories and like those narratives you're talking about of why they're failing. And like to me, I'm like, how the fuck are you convincing yourself that it, like it's this external? Like first off, it's embarrassing. Yeah. It's like it's literally embarrassing to be like, I'm not succeeding because of this. And I'm like, are you 18? Are you 19? Like I've been there. I've done that where I've been pissy and moaned and I'm like, Regardless if there was truth behind it or not, it didn't help my situation. Now I'm this no. guy who, I remember with football, man, I did that. I, like, I came in, I wanted to be this, uh, you know, I was like, all right, man, I'm fucking all Canadian, all OUA, and I was like, under, under recruited, but I was still like, yo, bro, I know how fucking good I am, I want to fuck this shit up, and it was like, such a, like, overconfidence, but in a good way, but then when it yeah. wasn't there, and I wasn't getting that same respect, and I had to fight for it, I was just like, what the hell is this shit? And I was pissed about it. And my thing was like, all right, I'm going to go transfer. You know, like, it, I'm happy I transferred and it worked out in, in some realm. But, like, there were so many moments where, like, I could just handle it way more maturely. Yeah. And now I have a story. I don't have a result. I didn't become an all-Canadian. Like, I have a story of why. And, again, it's cool. I use that story as, like, an anecdotal reference of, like, hey, man, like, I was a little pissy 19-year-old with a chip on my shoulder, which, again, I advocate having some chip on your shoulder. Yeah. But to an extent where, like, if you're going to start blaming the rest of the world, regardless if there is validation to that, it doesn't look good on you, and nothing gets resolved. Like no. your, your life still sucks. Like you still aren't that okay, and you aren't successful. You aren't making yeah. money. You didn't get the promotion. Like You aren't living life you're meant to live. Okay, it yeah. can be everyone's fault. Man. Maybe everyone did push you down. You had the worst circumstances. But there are other people that had those same circumstances, and they made it work. Yeah. Like I said, like, and, and I'm a huge advocate. It's like if you have alcoholic parents and your parents beat you and abuse you, that sucks. That's mm -hmm. a shitty upbringing, man. But there's someone else out there that's had that same shit go on, probably worse, and they turn that shit around, and they end up making a success story out of it. Yeah. And it's like when you put that perspective on, like, you don't have any more... Uh, you know, credibility to be like, well, like this is my situation, so I was screwed from the beginning. It's like, well, what about them? Yeah. I get my environment might have been really positive compared to other people. But I didn't have the same resources as, you know, people are the most wealthiest people. And a lot of people say the most wealthiest people, well, they're given everything. It's almost like a curse. So there's so many different elements. Yeah. And, like, if you focus on all these external of him or hers, like, just focus on you. Yep. You know, what can you can control, you know? Because at the end of the day, like, that's going to make you feel free. Yeah. And it's going to give you so much more clarity to be like, all right, all I can do is make, like, M the best 
M possible. Yeah. With Melissa M. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, but that's yeah. the thing, right? That's, <laughs> it's the idea to, like, just how can I better improve my situation? Because there's so many variables that are just... Yeah. Talks, like, toxic. Yeah. And I think also looking for the lesson in all of those experiences, um, because every experience good and bad has some sort of lesson to teach you and until you learn that lesson you will keep repeating those situations mm -hmm. right so i don't know i think uh i think if you can look at every experience and be like hey what can i take away from this and what can i apply that for myself or how can i apply that for other people i i, I think that will make a lot of those you know maybe possibly negative situations a lot easier and a lot better to kind of go through mm -hmm. um it's like your own constructive feedback too right yeah yeah it's like a self-audit like we talked about right and yeah it's, it's not repeating those same habits because how many people go back to like the same shitty relationship and like that's mind-blowing to me yeah i'm like you're in control of that and like you're in control of getting back to that person regardless that person makes you feel like shit yeah okay that's not cool that they're doing that but you've chosen to adapt and adopt to that yeah. environment you're like okay man like i'm gonna be part of this it's like man you've had four fucking chances and like it's always been shit yeah like, like what, 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 what are we doing like, yeah, yeah i blame you now i don't blame the other girl the other guy who's making your life like hell like oh yeah Absolutely. you're both at fault you know yeah. and, you, and you see it with social media everyone's like social media is fucking us up it's okay okay man like but you, you have the choice you can delete social media you don't have to yeah. be on social media Yet we come up with these like external reasons of like no, but how, like I but I need to I need to be connected. I need to be this. Yeah. I need to be that. It's like I need to feel love. But Brandon, you don't get it, man. Like she makes me feel good, but she also makes me feel like shit. Yeah. Is that a good trade off? I'm sure there's a, like there's a you know a situation where you can feel good almost all the time. Yeah. You know, and find that is out yeah. there. It's not like the good good and bad like isn't a healthy relationship, man. Like, yeah. You're gonna. I think, uh, I think people kind of like prolong their decision making or prolong the inevitable when it comes to something that they're, um, that's giving them a lot of discomfort. So, um, people who complain all the time, I like, I'm a, I'm an extremely supportive person, mm -hmm. uh, for the most part. And I try to support all my friends and even people that I don't know, um, through stuff as well. But the one thing I can't stand is when people just complain all the time. I feel like you you almost get like one chance to complain mm -hmm. or, or maybe talk about it with me. And then after that, I'm kind of like, okay, well, what are you going to do about it? You know, you know your situation, all right? It's like we, we can go through options. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know how you feel. You know what's going on. What are you going to do about it, right? Like, stop complaining. Like, do you want to just complain to complain? Because if so, like, let me put my earphones in and... You know, you can keep going, but <laughs> no, yeah, and yeah, and it just drives me nuts. And um, you know, I think if you're really unhappy, and that's where I think it goes back to people just being okay, being in misery, right? Yeah. For whatever reason, or they just want that attention, or they want like somebody to pity them, or you know, um, well, it feels like you're. It feels like it makes you important. To that moment. Yeah. You know, when someone's like cares to you. And like, yeah, you're going to have people that are empathetic to your situation and they're going to share their love with you and they're going to want to make you feel better. And in that moment, you feel important to that person. Yeah. You know, you're you're the person that's, a, a, you know, they but have those, your attention. Yeah, those are fleeting though. Those. Well, of course it is. Yeah. It's, not, it's not real. Like, an actual, it's not like, it's like it's like a dopamine release. It's not yeah. like, I mean, again, a lot of people chase that dopamine release rather than like the actual long lasting serotonin. Right? And I it's think like, that's what it is. And so then they look at that next person to complain to or yeah. whatever, but you're actually, you're losing relationships and, and you're, and you're losing you're good wrecking, relationships. Yeah. You know, you're people wrecking are things. hanging around with you and they're okay with you complaining. Like they're probably not, I don't want to, I don't want to put them all in the category. My mom's a phenomenal listener, but like, mm. you know, it's like, um, there's a lot of people that will probably take your complaining and like, they're not going to really give you a lot of like, Product, uh, like constructive criticism, yeah, and they just take it and they let you vent. And there's a time for that. I get that too, mm -hmm. right? There's not you don't want to be that guy who's always been like, all right, hear what you're saying, but no, what can you do about of, it today? Of course, yeah. Right? And I'm like, yeah. kind of been guilty of that. Where people are like, this one fucking here, this one a bitch for like five minutes, Brandon. I'm like, all yeah. right, how are you fixing that? Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, it's like, yeah, but how are you gonna fix that? Like, I don't yeah. want to hear it twice. I yeah. really don't, right? Like, it's just, it's unacceptable in this day and age with the resources you have and the control you have. Yeah. To, like, remove yourself from a situation or make it better for yourself or improve it. Like, yeah. there's just so many options that are at your disposal. It's like, yeah. 
Man. Or start, yeah, start taking action, right? And then, like, even, and sometimes things are slow, but they mm -hmm. should be changing, right? So then the next time, you know, that situation sort of comes up, it should be somewhat different. Like, okay, like, had this conversation, um, and it went like this, uh, you know, and you can still be upset about it, and, it, you know, the whole situation can, you can still be complaining about, so to speak, but, you know, you want to see that change. You want to see somebody For actually... Sure trying to make that difference in their life right and when they're not i'm just kind of like okay like, and that's and then that's on you as a person as a listener to be mm -hmm. like man i'm not listening to this soul crushing bullshit anymore like yeah. i'm gonna take myself out of that environment because you're doing nothing healthy for me and all you want to do is be that person to bitch and complain yeah. and come up with excuses and rationalization and i give you uh, a solution and you wrecked it and you come back with your solution of why you can't do it and how i'm he held down and this is a shit cycle of yeah. a person bitching and you fighting it and you're listening you're rolling your eyes like, get yourself away from that. Like, yeah. that person is no longer of value to you in that regard. And that's too draining on the body and the system emotionally and mentally and physically and everything for you to waste your time with that. Yeah. Like, it really is. And, like, you need to be that person who's, like, a good friend and be like, bro, I'm not fucking dealing with this shit anymore. Yeah. Rectify the behavior. Quit bitching, but I don't want to hear it. Your life sucks <laughs> and is that just all over the place, man. Like, take control. Man mm. up here. Like, you're a grown-ass man or woman. Like, yeah. figure this shit out. Like, there are resources out there to help you out. I'm giving you actual practical advice. If you don't take that, man, you need to remove yourself from the situa uh, situation immediately. And I think a lot of people get so scared. They're like, but I have this, like, he needs me, man. Like, he's so broken down. And, like, she's so broken. Yeah. Like, it's like, okay, man, well, you have two options. You can be that support system and have that person drain you. Which all that's all they're looking for. They're yeah. looking to drain you. They want you to get back in their fucking pit yeah. of like shit and misery. They want to have a comfortable environment if everyone else is in misery with them, so they don't feel alone. Yeah, that's not a good person to be around. Yeah, move. And again, and so you said it there too, right? Their fear, right? Yeah. They're fearful of. I don't know. I think in that situation, fearful of um, not feeling needed. Yeah. Or not necessarily wanted, but needed. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, yeah, uh, when it comes to people not making those changes, I think they're they're almost afraid. They're afraid to let go. They're afraid to make that change. They don't know. It's that uncertainty, yeah. right, that people really can't handle. But I think it's like putting yourself through those situations of uncertainty that really help you grow. And then once you kind of you know, get over that hill and, you know, push yourself past that first step, right? You realize like how much of a benefit there is to doing that for yourself. Mm -hmm. And then I think, then I think that starts to snowball and you keep doing more and more and more, right? And I, th I think that's honestly like, um, sort of like what happened when I was in my own misery, right? And then, you know, I cut certain people out, I, I cut certain behaviors out, I implemented other things, you know, things that were a little bit uh, foreign to me, and then, um, you know, as you start seeing the benefit, you're like, okay, I really like this lifestyle, I like, I like this mentality, I like this role I'm on, mm -hmm. um, but it kind of takes, you know, getting over that fear of that change, that initial fear of that change to kind of get to that place, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the thing, it's like, you're going to have moments that, as the person that does dismiss themselves from that environment that you're going to feel lonely. Like, it's not like, it's like, well, I just made the decision mm -hmm. to be on my own and I'm going to be in this productive environment. I'm going to be this, like, you know, motivated, driven brand. And it's like, it's not just like, well, you know, rainbows. It's like, yeah. no, man, you're going to have moments where like, you feel like you're on this, like, bizarre world. And you're like, yo, everyone around me is like, they don't get what I'm trying to do, right? And then, yeah. like, the majority of people are unfortunate like 90 percent range of like they have excuses and rationalizations and there's only so much room well i think there's more room than it is but a lot of people feel feel like there's only like room for like five percent at the top of the you know at the you know at the top mm -hmm. and we get scared that we're going to lose all that and we're like well what if i lose that familiarity that's made me like feel so like at home it's yeah like, but it's the idea of settling like okay you can settle for that and your life's not going to really excel but like your life can be a lot better and you're going to create new relationships and it's like this year, I've made a lot of relationships with people, like whether it's the ultra running community, like yourself, Matt, and like Riley. I've had like a lot of good people this year. I'm like, yeah, like these people have like, their head on their shoulders. They want to do cool shit. I'm more motivated by knowing them now. And it's like, I didn't have yeah. these connections a year ago. So, yeah. like, and, and like people are like, when you step outside your comfort zone, you force yourself into other environments and you're doing productive work. Like, the, the attraction 
connects. Like people mm -hmm. are like, okay, man, like I want to be around someone like that because I don't see that too often. Yeah. And once you do that, then you start getting, and then the connections start growing because yeah. then you know some people, I know some people that are like, hey, man, they're motivated, they're motivated, boom. And then it's like connections just grow, right? Yeah. It's like what happened with Julian and you and me, right? It's yeah. like you didn't know Julian, but I was like, hey, man, Julian's this awesome ultra runner. He's got like a lot of ideas. And then you met him and then your connection grows. And the only one is just how it happens, yeah. right? And it's just, it gets better, right? Yeah. Don't feel like if you do lose some relationships and you feel lonely and you have to make some sacrifices, like it will grow into like having better, stronger relationships in, in the long run. Yeah, well, how many people feel lonely when they're in a relationship, right? Oh, yeah, that's Like, that's, part. you know, so the whole lonely thing is very interesting because there's a lot of people that seem like they have all of this around them, yeah. right? Or they're in a relationship, and yet they sometimes are the loneliest ones. Um, and then, yeah, of course, like, when you start cutting people out of your life or certain things out of your life, like, yeah, you, you'll definitely have periods of loneliness, but I think that's a really good time to sit and learn how to be okay with yourself. Yeah. Right? Like, sit with yourself. Um, you know, there's that whole thing where people are, are so busy these days. They're constantly going from one thing to the next and the next, and they have no time, and, and they never just chill out. And I think those people have a really hard time being with themselves. Yeah. I think they have a hard time with themselves. Um, they don't know how to just relax and sit and be a human. Yeah. And <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like just finally listen to your thoughts and listen to your body. Um, and I think, you know, when you start cutting out that toxicity in your life, first you have to acknowledge that, but when you cut that out, it gives you so much time like such valuable time to actually get to know yourself a little bit more and I think that's that's a little bit scary because yeah. people don't really like you don't really know what you're doing when you're starting you're just kind of like holy shit like I'm just like sitting here and there's nothing going on and and there's all these thoughts in my head and you know it's a lot it's, of them are really negative and yeah like right and so again that's that's why I started actually meditating was to kind of figure that out and learn not how to go down those little like rabbit holes and spirals and stuff like that um, but yeah, it's like a perfect opportunity to start doing something a little bit more mindful. Um, and, and like some of your ideas that you blog about, mm -hmm. right? So I think that's another opportunity to do a lot of that stuff that's really beneficial for yourself and getting to know yourself. Um, you know, go do stuff that you used to do as a kid, go, go do something for yourself and, and become a lot more mindful with yourself. And you're going to become a, a much more whole person mm -hmm. when you do that. And then when you show up, you're showing up as your best self. And you're showing up as your true self, too. Because now you actually know what you like, what you don't like, yeah, who yeah. you are, Huge. right? And then you start attracting those people that are like-minded and on the same page as you. And then your whole life shifts. And, and what was once very scary it's it's completely different now and you have a lot less loneliness even when you are on your own because you're okay with yourself yeah. I think that's beautiful <laughs> no, that's, that's really really well said right <laughs> and I think a lot of people can like take that away. like you want to go into like you want to use like your social connections as like just a, a extra benefit right like yeah. again I like being social just like as much as the next person but you don't want to use those things like crutches where you're like I need that to feel you know, full. Mm -hmm. And like that's a dangerous game because like you're gonna get put on your own and you're gonna have to like figure that stuff out. You don't want to depend on other people to make you feel happy. That external yeah. was very dangerous because now you're taking like that control away from you and you're putting on other people. Like, oh, hopefully I see Melissa today and she brings me up and she sparks yeah. me up. It's like, man, that's a lot of pressure for you. It's like, like maybe you got stuff going on and maybe you're not feeling great and then you bring me down. It's like, no, like, I want to have enough control where, like, I feel good with who I am. Yep. I know who I am. I know what I want. I'm okay with that. And I use those external forces to, as, like, you know, just extra benefits. Like, all right, man, I want to spend time with this person. I want to go do that. I want to go for a run. I want to enjoy life. Like, mm -hmm. Those are good things to do, but you want to do it from a place where you're fully content and fulfilled with who you are. Yeah. But, again, it takes time because we validate the opinion of people we don't give a fuck about yep. which we don't <laughs> had to emphasize that but it's like crazy to me it's like that instagram thing or anything like, yeah. we're, like we're like we're so concerned about the validation of people we don't even really care about and yep. it's like the people that we do care about we we put such like we don't have a lot of attention toward and it's like yeah. don't you want to make those people proud and you want those people to like you and yet we're looking for like and it's what we do right we're yeah. so like external driven like i hope this gets approval 
Yeah. It's like, what's going to get approval just so people know, like, later in life is, like, authenticity. Like, people are going to get attracted to the person who's genuine to who they are, and they're okay with that. Like, everyone's going to be different. I'm not going to have the same personality as you or same personality as Matt. We're going to like different music. I'm going to, like... Hell, I made this reference on the radio the other day, and I was like, I like, I'm like, hey, I, from externally, I'm like this, you know, I played football and I work out and I wrestle and I have all these kind of like more macho things, but I'm like the biggest Christmas fan. You saw yeah. me, everyone's always like, what the hell's wrong with you, man? Like, why are you like, I have like a playlist of Mariah Carey all over Christmas. And I'm like, I don't know, I just like it, man. It is what it, yeah. I, I'm not afraid to play it. I'm not gonna yeah. be like, ah, turn it down, hit some like rock yeah. just to like show that side of me. It's like, I'm confident in who I am where I'm not going to be, like, yeah. rattled by being, like, you're a pussy, Brandon. It's like, yeah. no, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> right? And it's like, yeah. but people that are insecure and they're, like, deep down, yo, I am a pussy. Right? They're, like, fuck, I don't want people to know it. So I want to hide that yeah. that that face. I'm going to put a mask on so people don't call me out of my bullshit. Yeah. But when you're cool with your bullshit and you're, like, no, nah, man, like, I, I know who I am. I can handle myself and I'm good with who I am. Yeah. And I just, like... Christmas is like okay like yeah. I'm fully immersed in that like it's like <laughs> and it's it's just it's just funny when you see that because people are like yeah man like you can like me or not but they're like at least he's doing him yeah right and at least I'm okay with that and like the, the stuff that gives me so much fulfillment we're like hey man like once the first Christmas song comes on in 2019 yeah. I want to be ecstatic that day and I'll love all the Christmas specials and all that uh, stuff and people are gonna be like what the hell but I'm like that yeah. gives me fulfillment it brings me nostalgia like it just has a warming comfortable feeling to it that I enjoy, and it's like, yeah. I'm not, why would I, and people will, like, not watch those things, yes. for the sake of, like, they're like, ah, it's for kids, and it's like, well, is it for kids, or is it just, like, you don't want to be, you know, yeah. seen that way, yeah, it always reminds me of that 70s show episode, when, like, Kelso wants to, like, run back home to watch, <laughs> I think, Rudolph the Red-Nosed yeah, Reindeer, yeah. and they're all chirping him, <laughs> it's like, just because he's, like, 19 or 20, and I'm like, yeah. man, like, it's just, it's just funny, because he's so himself and yeah. that's why everyone loved Kelso because they're like it's just Kelso man like yeah. he's funny and he's true to who he is and like and he's like, this lovable character yeah. right and like there's some sort of like just attraction to this guy who's just being like oh man that's just some yeah. Kelso who's like a 10 year old right yeah but uh who's like happy being him and yeah. not afraid to show that person right yeah. uh we got a few minutes let's talk quick about your transition into ultra running just because oh, I want to talk about the challenges yeah, I like yeah, when yeah. people adopt new challenges uh that are super exciting and thrilling how has that been? Well, how would you promote that in terms of like taking on challenges that seem like, oh man, this is a bit extreme. Like you've never ran a half marathon, you never ran a marathon, and you've gone on to an ultra marathon. Right? And months, again, you've run a lot yeah, yeah. Uh, for, for like exercise, yeah. and, like getting out on the trails, and you started running with myself and others. How's that been? And how what would you what kind of advice you give people to be like not Ooh, be not, scared to challenge themselves? Not afraid. Um, it's been wild, honestly, because. Just a few months ago uh, is when I started running with you and Julian, yeah. and Julian mentioned it in April, and I was like, yeah, right, like, as if I'll ever run an ultra marathon, and then sure enough, a few months later, signed up for one. Um, yeah, I, I think it was just the accumulation of a couple little events that made me realize m maybe I could do this, mm -hmm. and then... Again, surrounding myself by, like, you guys, honestly, like, I think surrounding yourself by people who are really encouraging and kind of see your potential is really important. Um, so it's, yeah, it's been, it's been really fun. And again, this is sort of just the beginning because I think why I signed up, like, last week or so. Yeah. Um, but for me, I'm just breaking it down. So, you know, I ran my first 20 kilometers in April. I think I've ran... On a whim, mind you. Yeah, too. unintentionally, um, so that was good. And then after that, I was like, wow, I can run 20 kilometers, so that's good. And, and you were in pain, of, right? Let's let, people, let people know that, too. Yeah. I think it's like one of those things, like, your body's adapted very well over the last, like... Yes. It's not like you're just some, like, freak human. You're like, ah, I just ran 20K, and I like, No, I had to physically lift my legs up into the car to get in the car, like... I, I was very sore, but uh, my next 20 after that, not nearly as sore. And I think once I realized, like, you know, I was adapting okay, um, and I could do I could do more than 10 kilometers, because I think that's the most I'd really run prior, um, that started, start, sort of sparked that mentality in me that, you know, I can do, I can do more than this, and I can push myself a little bit further. Um, and then also too, like surrounding myself by like 
yourself and Julian and, and looking at what other people are doing and looking at, you know, some of the challenges that others are going through. I'm like, oh, the least I could do is like try 50 kilometers. I know like you're doing like 120 miles, right? That's Hopefully. insane. Yeah. Yeah. I got some helicopters <laughs> out there. <laughs> like that's insane.